Hallow's End has got to be my favourite world event in World of Warcraft, not just because of some of the cool cosmetic items you get, some cool achievements which are actually not too bad to obtain, a really cool mount if you're lucky enough for it to drop, but also lots of decent items that are 200 eye level, so they're on par with Nax 10 gear, and the plate helmet in particular where you use it and it lets the horseman laugh through you, it's just pretty cool. We might as well start with the most exciting bit, which will be the loot. One thing worth noting is it's absolutely worth doing the achievement first called the Saviour of Hallow's End. The Headless Horseman will attack six villages across Azeroth. So that's going to be Karanos in Dunmorrow, Azure Watch on Azure Mist Isle, Razor Hill in Duratar, Brill in Tirithful Glades, and Falcon Wing Square in Eversong Woods. So basically, the first place you get to a mailbox. He starts throwing fires all over the buildings, and you'll see buckets of water where you grab the water, you aim, and you throw it to put the fires out the first quest is just to put five fires out you could almost say this is just getting you used to how the event works and then the second quest will be to actually eliminate all the fires and basically beat the headless horseman once you've put all the fires out you can speak to the npc and you can get a quest called the headless horseman now it's absolutely worth getting this first because actually you'll be able to summon the headless horseman twice so for example, looking at our kills here, on the first night it launched, we could all summon the Headless Horseman twice, meaning we'd done 10 kills, but no mount. That was pretty sad. Now, apparently people are saying that you didn't need to do the fire quest to actually be able to pick up the breadcrumb quest called the Headless Horseman, which enables you to summon him twice, but I couldn't get it before actually putting the fires out. So let me know in the comments whether you had to put the fires out or you could get the quest straight away, because I'm not 100% on that. As I say, I couldn't pick the quest up till I'd done the fires. But then you're going to want to get over to the Scarlet Monastery graveyard, just run through, click on the pumpkin, click on the dirt behind him, and summon the Headless Horseman. Now, there's a few rings that you can get. Ring of Ghoulish Glee, which has got agility, stamina, crit, hit, and attack power, which is very nice. Now, whilst there's a lot better that you can get from raids, especially 25-man, or even 10-man Malagos, where you can get Surge Needle Ring, for example, this is still an absolutely solid item to use before you get that, or just to use on an ult. The same applies for the Horseman Seal, with stamina, intellect, hit, haste, and spell power very nice starter caster ring and finally with crit spell power and mp5 a nice healer ring the two big ticket items really from this excluding the mount is the horseman's horrific helm which has got crit hit and it's got that nice use effect if you're into those use effects the horseman's baleful blade which is very very nice with a slow 2.7 speed can see a lot of alt dk's wanting to get this as soon as physically possible a couple of temporary mounts which is just the magic broom and the swift magic broom these don't last forever it can only be used during hallow's end so it's worth noting that this doesn't go towards your mounting of mounts achievement the two items you're absolutely gonna want though from here so you can get the achievements done because once you've got the big meta achievement done of what a long strange trip it's been which will be put on screen now this rewards a 310 percent speed mount and it's the it's a nice drake it's not the best don't get me wrong and you can still get 310 speed mounts from raids etc but you might as well get it because all it requires is a couple of hours of each world event to get all of these achievements knocked out and it's yours so you're going to need the Sinister Squashlin and the Hallowed Helm. And the reason you're going to need these is for the achievement called Sinister Calling, which is just to obtain a Sinister Squashlin pet and a Hallowed Helm. You can see I've got the Hallowed Helm already. Sinister Squashlin, still waiting for that one. There's also a weighted jack-o'-lantern that drops, which you just jam onto your head or throw at someone. And finally, the big one, which is obviously the Horseman's Reins. Everyone's going to want this. It's a fantastic looking mount. It flies. It goes on the ground. It just depends where you are and also scales with your riding skill. But an absolutely amazing mount, which I'm guessing is the reason you'll be doing the Headless Horseman every day. In terms of achievements, there's a very short quest line, one for the Horde and one for the Alliance, but it both revolves around South Shore. For the Horde, you've got to get rotten eggs and ruined kegs. And it's fairly simple. You just need to throw some rotten eggs around in South Shore and then run into the inn, interact with the keg and then you're going to go back to Tyrus Fall Glades outside of the big wicker man and speak to Dark Caller Yanka to hand it in. From Sergeant Hartman in South Shore, the Alliance can get the quest and you're literally just going to clean up South Shore from what the Horde have left in a mess and then go and find the Wicker Man in Tirisful Glades outside of Undercity. While we're talking about this, it's definitely worth mentioning the buff, which is Invocation of the Wicker Man. The Alliance get it slightly easier than the Horde because the Horde are gated by what time it is. 
but for two hours you can get a 10% experience and reputation buff. So for the Horde you can get this buff between 8pm server time and 6am server time and it's easy, you just run over to where the Wicker Man is, loot an Ember and jobs are good and you've got a two hour buff. An interesting note, and I've not seen this myself because I've not been there at 8pm server time, but you can actually see Sylvanas Windrunner burning it if you're there at the right time. The Alliance however, they aren't gated by what time it is. This is why I said they've got an easier time because technically it's not easier because the horde just interact with an item and they get the buff whereas the alliance need to physically kill a mob but the mob's only a level 60 elite it's nothing really to worry about but you haven't got to worry about what time it is because you can come over it at any time kill a wicker man guardian and it will drop the ember there's a few guardians you'll only want to pull one even though they are only level 60 elite but still why pull more than you need to but once the guardian dies they'll let out the wicker man guardian embers on the floor which can then be looted to obtain the buff if you've not got particularly good bags it's also worth mentioning that you can get jack-o-lantern which is an 18 slot bag and these drop from any level 60 plus mobs and you can get pumpkin bags which drop from any level 50 plus mob now most of the achievements revolve around trick or treating so once once an hour you can talk to any innkeeper and either be tricked or be treated ideally you're wanting to be treated if you're tricked you just end up getting transformed into something for a couple of minutes and it's just pretty annoying whereas if you get treated which is absolutely what you're wanting to happen you get an assortment of items such as candy corn lollipops candy bars etc but what you're really after here is flimsy masks and hallowed ones and the reason you want this is for the mask task which is just to obtain a flimsy mask during hallows end a mask for all occasion which is to collect 20 unique masks and the masquerade which is to get transformed by the hallowed ones listed below so that's bat pirate skeleton ninja wisp leper gnome and ghost as you can see here they are soul bound so i've got a hallowed wand pirate if you look here you'll just see people trading charges in trade chat trying to get this achievement done so just communicate with your guild, save all your ones, and then just all meet up, get a group of you together, and all of you get the achievement at the same time. The important thing here is you are using the trick or treat option on the innkeeper as close to every hour as physically possible. It's also worth mentioning that the mask task isn't actually part of the meta achievement to get the title for the hallowed and to obviously get your contribution towards what a long strange trip it's been. So don't stress about the masks too much. If you're going for 100% completion, start stressing, get it done. But ultimately, you don't need it to get the mount. There's also a really short quest line at the Orphanage in Stormwind and another one at the Orphanage in Ogrimmar. Obviously, that's for Alliance and Horde, respectively. These don't really give anything worth worrying about, but they do give some decent reputation with the home cities. So if you're after some reputation, grab them and get them done. But ultimately, it's just a bunch of Hallowed End pumpkin treats, which, to be fair, you're going to have loads of these, so it doesn't really matter. When you're getting your treats, bear in mind that Nerds is going to be something that you're going to want to keep hold of, so increases defense rating. I will just show you here that it does actually stack multiple times, so when you look at it and just see 5 defense, you'll be like, oh, that's rubbish, but it's actually 20 defense, which ain't that bad. And the same applies for all of these. They all stack four times. So it's actually a nice, easy way to get some easy hit rate in, some easy defense, some easy spell power with Pyroblast, Cinnamon, Roll. So you might as well keep hold of these. But Nerds is one that you want to keep an eye on and preferably don't waste them. Because to get Nerd Rage, which is part of the meta achievement, you're going to need to get 50 honorable kills while under the influence of the Nerd buff. I'd recommend probably just going and doing Winter Grasp. You're going to get 50 kills easily in one Winter Grasp. So just if you die, pop another Nerds, keep doing it, you know, easy. Check Your Head is another achievement, which using the weighted jack-o'-lantern where you can jam it onto your head or throw it someone else. So there's numerous ways to get this. Obviously, you're going to get it in the treat bags. You're going to get it from the Headless Horseman. You're going to get loads of these, so you haven't got to worry. So the easiest way to do this is actually just shift click on the ones that you need to track. So like Check Your Head, so you can see here. And then when you're running around Dalaran, if there's someone there that you haven't done, like a troll or an orc or a night elf, jam that jack-o'-lantern on their head. And finally, the most boring and long one, but you should do what my friend Mijay recommended, and he was absolutely right, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. In fact, I'm going to start doing it tomorrow, is run round doing all of the candy buckets, as seen here, visiting them all in Outland, visiting them all in Eastern Kingdoms, all in Kalimdor, and tie it in with the Explorer at the same time. So yes, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but you're going to get the Explorer title, you're going to get all the Explorer achievements done, 
and you're going to get the world event completed at the same time. Now you can see none of these are going to take particularly long. The absolute nightmare and choke point is going to be trick and treats of Azeroth, which just stick Netflix on, sit and watch that, run around mindlessly, use all the things, ATT, classic. That will help because it shows you coordinates for the Explorer, so you can do this at the same time, follow the coordinates around, jobs are good em. But ultimately, that's all the cool things that I can think of for Hallow's End. If you think I've forgot anything, let me know in the comments. But I'm pretty sure this could be classed as a pretty comprehensive rundown. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't leave without pressing like. Go on, do it now. I dare you. And obviously, yeah, subscribe to the channel and roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you remember when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.